I started out at school being a games programmer and I was very passionate about being a games programmer. And then when I left school, I joined a financial services company as a programmer and learned to program. And I was really, really lucky to get in to industry straight from doing my A-levels. Uh, I then developed my career. I moved forward over several different jobs. And then I moved into the software industry and I worked for a, a very large enterprise software company called Oracle. Um, and then subsequently worked for a large enterprise software company called SAP. And then decided to come to Imperial and do an executive MBA. It really reawakened the kind of entrepreneurial side of me. And I'm now working at Google in a far more entrepreneurial role, um, having an amazing amount of fun and just taking all of my previous experience plus the amazing stuff that Imperial gave to me and bringing the two together. There are different levels of maturity and development in different markets. Um, when we look at the Americas or we look at you know, the UK or other kind of more advanced European economies, there's a different level of understanding of what's available in the market. There's a different level of adoption. So the way entrepreneurs and businesses are supported and communicated to varies depending on those markets. In some places it might be more of an education about you know, moving to the cloud, you know, using new types of collaboration, etc. In more mature markets where those things are well known, then it's more around best practices and features and you know you're communicating potentially to chief technology officers and IT professionals rather than individual business owners. But the parallel that I see is in Africa and you know, in any of the mature markets that we've got are the micro businesses. So Africa is so full of amazing entrepreneurs who are picking up technologies like Google Apps, trialing them, using them, being supported by us in that trial process and then going on to use them to you know, build their websites, communicate with each other, you know, communicate with their customers, put up a social profile. And that's very much the same in developed markets and in kind of those emerging markets. Let's talk about Africa. To me, the biggest thing will be around connectivity. Africa is a mobile first environment. So collaboration, messaging, engagement, communication, you know, marketing your products, selling your products, engaging with your customers, it's all done via mobile. I mean, people do that as their first platform. Here in the West, we're just catching up to that. You know, most children would be mobile first, most adults wouldn't be. Um, what I see happening is Africa becoming more and more connected. We still need to wait to see how that connectivity happens. There are many amazing projects and technologies out there um, from you know, faster, faster mobile phone networks, through uh, metropolitan-wide Wi-Fi, through uh, projects like Google's Project Loon, which is balloons floating to provide internet connectivity down to landlocked areas. So that connectivity is the thing that will really, really transform Africa. Africa's an amazing place. It's entrepreneurial. It's fast-paced. It's passionate. And digitally enabling all of those businesses, both small and large, to get online, to collaborate, to engage with the rest of the world seamlessly, to me will be transformational, not just for Africa, but for the rest of the world. Right now, we see technology as you know, information technology or, or ICT. To me, technology over time should vanish. It should disappear. It should be a tool that enables us to achieve what we're trying to achieve. And what we're trying to achieve might well be that you and maybe four other people in the team are collaborating over different time zones, you're working with each other you know, in real time using video, you're collaborating on documents that you're working on in real time simultaneously, and you're then also publishing things live to the internet as soon as you go, and you're not seeing any of the complexity behind this. So to me, the magic in this is making it real time, making it easy, making it fun, and making it just seamless that it happens without having to know too much about it. We don't need more IT specialists. We need more people with great ideas and great inspiration. Students starting out in their career, the advice that I'd give them is to focus on 
being technically very capable. Just really understand the technologies and how things work, whatever those things are, and get as deep into that as you can. But also in parallel maintain business skills and understand how the revenue flows, how the, consu how the customers work, understand those business skills. And then the third pillar to your career will be creativity. So if you can be technically capable, if you can be business savvy, and you can be creative, you'll be really, really successful. What we see with many people coming through uh, education and into different businesses is that they maybe have one or two of those three specialisms and they lack one. The people who always get hired, that always come through, are the bright-eyed people who are technically capable, business savvy and have creative skills.